this article just came in seven hours ago, and uh, I'm just terrified by just looking at this. Terrifying sea level prediction now looks far less likely, but marine ice cliff instability is just common sense. This is by David Middleton on uh, What's Up With That? A terrifying sea level prediction now looks far less likely. Experts warn that our overall picture of sea level rise looks far scarier today than it did even five years ago. January 4th, 2019 by Robinson Mayer. One of the scariest scenarios for near-term disastrous sea level rise may be off the table for now, according to a new study previewed at a recent scientific conference. Two years ago, the glaciologists Robert de Conto and David Pollard rocked their field with a paper arguing that several massive glaciers in Antarctica, which were much more unstable than previously thought, those key glaciers, which include Thwaites Glacier and Pine Island Glacier, both in the frigid continents west, could increase global sea levels by more than three feet by 2100. Three feet. The paper warned such a rise could destroy the homes of more than 150 million people worldwide. It is reassuring constraint placed on one of the most alarming scientific hypotheses advanced this decade. The press had described a canto and Pollard's original work as an ice apocalypse spawned by a doomsday glacier. And now their worst case skyrocketing rocketing sea level scenario seems extremely unlikely, at least within our own lifetimes. Yet their work and the work of other sea level rise scientists will still warn of potential catastrophe for our children and grandchildren. If every country meets its current com commitment under the Paris Agreement, the Earth will warm about 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, compared with its pre-industrial average. In their new research, De Conto and his colleagues say that there's a tipping point somewhere between 2 and 3 degrees Celsius of temperature rise, after which the West Antarctic ice sheet will slip into rapid and shattering collapse. The new results inform one of the biggest outstanding questions and most fervent debates concerning how climate change will reshape our world. How much will the sea rise and how fast will that upheaval occur? De Conto and several other American geoglaciologists, including Richard Alley, a professor at Penn State and a co-author of new research, represent something like the vanguard of that discussion. They champion an idea called marine ice cliff instability, or MICI for short, which maintains that West Antarctic Antarctic glaciers will eventually crumble under their own weight. By the middle of the next century, they warned this mechanism could send ocean levels soaring at a rate of several feet every decade. And for reference, along the U.S. East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean has risen by only about a foot over the last 12 decades. Thank goodness. Now, while marine ice cliff instability might be clunky, the idea is cinematic. Other researchers find this possible future somewhat fantastic. Quote, we, as European modelers, are slightly more skeptical of the marine cliff idea, end quote. Frank Patton, a geoglaciologist uh, at the Free University of Brussels, told me, quote, it has not been observed, not as such a scale, end quote. There is only one place in the world where Mickey is definitely happening, and that's Jacob Chavin Glacier on the west coast of Greenland. Ali, the Penn State glaciologist, addressed the sapphire-colored elephant in the room immediately after taking the dais, and he says, as he says, as he sees it, it's just common sense that Antarctic glaciers will develop problematic ice cliffs. In this scenario, he warned, quote, we will not have analogies. We're not going, we are going to move outside the instrumental data that we use to calibrate our models, end quote. And then came the skeptics, Dan Martin, a computational scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab argued that his and his colleagues' work showed the ice cliffs might simply be a product of running a computer model of ice physics at a too low resolution. Eric LaRour, a physicist at NASA, presented the possibility that physics of the Earth itself might slightly counteract some rapid ice cliff collapse as the ice sitting on West Antarctica melts 
the bedrock below it will bounce back up and things like that. Quote, when ice melts or thins, as you can think that uh, earth below it is going to rebound, he says that bedrock will rise, lifting the glacier, glacier partly out of the water. Such a mechanism could buy humanity some time, he said, giving us a 23 to 30 year delay in the total collapse of the West Antarctica. And this effect might hold off the collapse of West Antarctica for uh, 2,250 or 2,300. But then the ice sheet will disintegrate as fast as ever. And the meeting arrived at no clear conclusion. Mickey remains a young idea, first proposed only six years ago. It need not be rejected simply because scientists haven't arrived at hard conclusions yet. Fricker, the Scripps glaciologist, said it might not happen, but if there's a chance that it could happen, then shouldn't you involve that in your planning? If you're hosting a picnic and it might rain, you don't necessarily move the whole event, but you probably do make a plan B. If you're planning a city, you might as well keep this in the back of your mind. And uh, then he says, I thought about submitting a letter, but I doubt that they would want to hear what I think about this article. Robinson Mayer is a 20-something-year-old staff writer for Atlantic. He says, I love this bit. Then came the skeptics. Why were they even invited? I thought they had been banished by from the AGU. How dare they throw cold water on a perfectly good model-derived catastrophe? He says that sarcastically, of course. He says, a marine ice cliff is stability, Mickey has not been observed, not at such a scale, quote-unquote, might simply be a product of running a computer model of ice physics at a too low resolution, ignores post-glacial rebound, couldn't occur before until 2020, uh, 2050 or the year 2300. Yet the idea is cinematic. It's just common sense that anti uh, Antarctic glaciers will develop problematic ice cliffs and something we should plan for. So how can you plan for something that's never been observed, may not even happen, won't happen for two or three hundred years if it does happen? So uh, this comment was most reassuring. We will not have analogs. We're going to move outside the instrumental data that we use to calibrate our models. That will certainly be a relief to climate modelers. Their models will no longer have to be constrained by reality, which won't be much of a change. Amazing. There's a lot of data you can see in here. It's a very long article. Uh, De Conto and Pollard essentially asserted that we are headed back to the Pliocene over the next few hundred years. We've already experienced nearly one degree Celsius warning uh, since the pre-industrial time, and another half a degree to one degree Celsius between now and the end of the century it doesn't even put us into the Eemian climate territory, much less the Pliocene. Beyond that, who knows what will happen? While fossil fuels will dominate the energy mix for much of the century, does anyone really believe that better source of energy won't be added to the mix between the year 2100 and 2250? There is only one place in the world where Mickey is definitely happening, that's Jacobshav Glacier on the west coast of Greenland. Jacobshav Glacier is not a Mickey ana analogy for Antarctica, it's not even an analogy for any other glaciers in Greenland. Jacob Schaaf Glacier calving from recession, from fr front recession from the year 1850 to the year 2006. Jacobson is bar is located on the west coast of Greenland, latitude 69 north. The ice front where the glacier, glacier calves the sea receded more than 40 kilometers between the years 1850 and 2006. Between the year 1850 and 1964, the ice front retreated at a steady rate of about 0.3 kilometers per year, after which it occupied approximately the same location until the year 2001, when the ice front began to recede again, but far more rapidly at about 3 kilometers per year. And after 2004, the glacier began retreating up to its main tributaries, one to the north and a more rapid one to the southeast. And these changes are important for many reasons. As more ice moves from glaciers on land into the ocean, it causes a rise in sea level. Jacobshav is, brought, is Greenland's largest outlet glacier, draining 6.5% of Greenland's ice sheet area. 
the ice stream speed up and near doubling of the ice flow from land into the ocean has increased the rate of sea level rise by about 002 inches per year, or roughly 4% of the 20th century rate of sea level increase is due to this glacier, 4%. This image is from NASA, and this is on what's up with that, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.